pleased to welcome today Cindy McCain. Mrs. McCain is an American businesswoman, philanthropist, and humanitarian. She is a widow of a United States Senator, Vietnam veteran, and 2008 Republican presidential nominee John McCain, and the mother of television host and commentator Megan McCain. In your view, why is it important for people uh, who go and vote, especially with disabilities? Well, number one, uh, issues facing people with disabilities are, are ones that are, that are actually every phase of society, every phase of our community. And unless we vote and make, make the, the voices heard about the issues facing just people with disabilities, then our, our politicians and our community leaders won't do anything about it. Um, in my opinion, I think, I think people with disabilities have a great voice and have been very active, as you know, far more than I do, uh, on making sure that our leaders know the issues facing, facing people with disabilities and work on them and make sure that when you do vote, you vote for someone who is working specifically for you. I, this year, I mean, this season has been <clears throat> so controversial, but the bright spot, one of the bright spots I see in there is the activism on the part of the youth. In your past, it's been difficult to invigorate youth, and particularly people with disabilities, to get excited or upset or angry or whatever it might be, whatever emotion you're feeling. But that turns into activism, and that turns into voting. And so I believe that, it, that, that this particular year, we're going to see an outstanding number of not just young, but uh, people with disabilities at the polls. And it's going to be up to us to make sure that our, our friends with disabilities can get to the polls. Uh, that takes community activism, it takes activism on part of the campaign. It's, a, it's exciting, but it's also a challenge. And uh, each year I see this take place in my community. And uh, it's something that, that I care very deeply about, and I know that my husband did too. And we made sure, at least our, with our part of this, that we could actually help enable just people with disabilities to vote. Well, I thank him uh, very much for doing that. Um, and he, he actually reminded me a lot of uh, my dad, uh, yeah. who I lost uh, a few years back. And he'll be turning 100 uh, this month, which I can't oh. believe. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm also uh, a great uncle. So um, you and I, I guess, have a little, a little something in common. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, what do you remember, okay, this might be a hard question for you, Ashley. What do you remember your first time voting? Oh, I remember very clearly. Uh, my parents made sure that I was registered. Uh, you know, I was 18 years old, and so, you know, my head was other places. But, but it was instilled in me very quickly that not only did you register to vote, but that you voted. So my, I went with my parents the first time to go vote, and it was very exciting. I mean, all of a sudden, I, had, I didn't know I had. And could have, and uh, and I participated in something that I've obviously through the years have learned to not just respect but understand the importance and and it's not just a right; it's something that we should we should do. I mean, it's not just our right to do; we need to move up to that right and actually do it. And when people with disability don't go out and vote, something is preventing them um, right. to go out and vote. So we need to make sure that people with disabilities can. Uh, have their voices heard as well. Because yes. if every person with a disability in this country went out to vote, they could change an entire outcome of an election. You absolutely itself. could, absolutely. And that's, that's why voting is so important uh, for, not, for people with disabilities, but for everyone. I agree with you very much. Well, my voting plan is, is, has already been uh, enabled. Uh, I vote uh, absentee here. I sent my ballot in about three or four days ago. We didn't get our ballots until about the 10th of October. And so I sent it in immediately. So we all voted in the kitchen together and then <laughs> sent them all <laughs> together. And unless you vote, you don't have a voice. So I, I hope, I, leaving the candidates out of this, I think, I think, I hope the books say that finally the American people woke up and everybody voted and, and every vote counted. And so we have, a, we have issues up here in Arizona because it's so rural. When you talk about getting the vote out, getting our Native Americans to be able to vote, it's very difficult because it, it's so rural and it's so spaced out. I mean, there, there's huge farms, you know, way up in the hills and stuff. Face that every year, 
uh, try, just trying to enable them and make sure that they can get get a ballot or get be able to vote here. Before I end it, I do want to ask you what what is next for you? What's your next project that you're working? Oh gosh, <laughs> you know, I I work uh, the McCain Institute is a large part of what I do right now, and my my focus we have many focuses at the institute, but my personal focus is on human trafficking, and I've been working on that for quite some time. So I have. Uh, some lots of things coming up, in, in, including uh, the misinformation that like this organization QAnon about the issue of human trafficking and the people involved in it. So we're going to have to dig our issue out from underneath all this foundation and make sure that we, we that people understand what human trafficking is and how it's perpetrated. So that's my that's my next year. <laughs> Mrs. McCain, thank you so much. Oh, uh, my pleasure. Thank you. Very much. I really appreciate, appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome.